Well, thanks, Tom. Uh, happy to be on with you this morning. I, I really believe it, it went extremely well. It would be uh, eight plus for me, of course. You never want to give away tens too early. Uh, there's always room for improvement. But um, the response we've got, especially in certain markets, uh, actually kind of exceeded what our expectations were running low already on uh, courtside seats in Saskatoon. That probably comes as no surprise to, to anybody or fans out there. Uh, and all the markets are really performing well. So uh, you never really know until you get out there um, and we've done this now without really a, a heavy marketing push for the pre-sale but we're now we're starting to lead up and have our call to action with some of our social media and digital strategies you'll see a lot of stuff pushing that way uh, in terms of timing I mean obviously you guys are trying to get ahead of the curve in terms of your 2019 launch what were some of the considerations that you guys talked about in terms of okay when is the perfect time for us to launch season ticket marketing that's a great question because it, it was always kind of, a, you know, we had ideas. We're obviously working with it with a massive partner uh, in Ticketmaster, and we'll soon kind of uh, announce uh, something uh, big with them. But you, you got to take into consideration what you're able to do on a, on a team level, on a league level, but then with your partner as well. So uh, it's not often you start a league from scratch and then, you know, you have the league to worry about, but other six other markets and other pop opportunities with other potential markets and a lot of different strategies going along so we felt that we'd like we wanted to get our, our message out there sooner than later uh, we'd already received the first draft of our schedule so I've been reviewing that we'll probably go back to the table a little bit with some minor tweaks and then once we get the pre-sale we get some word of mouth and some organic growth then we start targeting the actual season uh, on sale and that goes with you know utilizing uh, your executive team and your presidents and people that have been in these situations before and and taking the best practices and, and adopting them. We're talking to CEBL Commissioner and CEO Mike Marielli, the former CFLer. We'll talk a little bit of CFL before we close out our time with you, Mike, but I've been so impressed with what you guys have done on the branding and the positioning side and how aggressive you've been in social media. How important have those building blocks of sport business been to the Canadian League Basketball League front office? It's been tremendous, and you know we we have a great agency um, that that helped us and continues to help us. We've we've hired internally now that the kind of the key missing pieces. Uh, we'll have another uh, marketing uh, senior marketing manager announcement coming up. Uh, and, and probably next week. And really, you just kind of you, you keep going. You put one foot in front of the other. You see where you're making some great headway, and you and you kind of adapt it. The beauty of the of the digital strategies, as you know, they can be tailor made and changed and and fixed and added on to or taken away depending on uh, you know kind of your return on investment or your engagement levels. And then you know we we do anticipate, and I, I know for sure we have some signed deals. Uh, with some uh, major partners that we'll be announcing soon. And I can tell you um, that one of them fell in love with our branding. And that is a major, major partner of ours that's going to create, you know, a great, uh, you know, it's going to take us and vault us to the next level as far as I'm concerned in, in, in Canadian sport. It's going to align us with, you know, some of the best out there already. And it come down to the branding that they just fell in love with. Mike, was there any doubt among yourself and, and your front office that you were going to go with animal names, animal mascots for your respective franchises from the beginning? We, we didn't have... My approach from the beginning was let's take the strategy, the NFL strategy, let's find a dominant icon that can represent and stand alone uh, when we remove the word mark over time. So if you look at all of our uh, of our brands, our team brands, they really have you know a dominant kind of logo or an icon, and then your descriptive uh, word mark, whether it's Saskatchewan Rattlers or, or Fraser Valley Bandits or what have you. But truthfully, in time, we want to be able to lose, lose those word marks, and that icon stands alone. So we fell into kind of the animal kingdom, not by by, uh, not exactly by design, but I think by default, we started saying what we didn't want to be. We didn't want to be heavy on the crest, heavy on the kind of very wordy, cartoony logos, um, but also 
remain young and uh, but also capture a little bit of the older crowd as well. You know, something that will look good on merchandise, on in print form, uh, in in you know on TV. So it's a big strategy, and uh, I, I think we nailed it. I, I feel comfortable about it. You always get different opinions from everybody, but I think the the avenue we went and we just kind of landed on the animal names by by chance and somewhat design. Uh, you know, I would say the design there was very smart. And certainly as a branding guy myself, I do think that you guys should not be shy about suggesting that you nailed it. And certainly when you look at what you're trying to be, family-driven entertainment, family-friendly entertainment, there's no better way to position that with your next generation of fans, with the kids, than with animal nicknames for the franchise. As you look at the hottest-selling uh, marks over the past 20 years from the Chicago Bulls to the Charlotte Hornets in the NBA and you look at um, you know the other uh, leagues as well it's the animal mascots it's the animal names that really drive because the kids are all over them yeah, you know, you hit it right on the head, and, and you know, we're going to start as you start seeing our merchandise roll out. I know our our partners and and our distributors uh, are going to just be so excited about being able to, you know, have a hat in a major retailer that will draw attention, and that was part of the plan. And and sometimes. You know, you're a little bit concerned with it. I think we all felt extremely comfortable. We have, I have a great team of people that uh, work with it. That all, was all done by an internal design team. Really, one guy in, gen- in general, Nick uh, Reitmeister, and uh, he just got better as we went along as well. So we are, you know, quite excited about it. And, and truthfully, you know, the, the younger kids, uh, their attraction to it and their love for it means that they're going to tell their parents about it. And you know, those are the the you know 30 plus to 40 plus individuals that are going to drive the revenue to bring their kids to the game. Mike, you guys are off to a great start. Keep up the good work. We'll uh, make sure we get another update from you in, in, in a matter of weeks as you take these next steps, including your, your schedule for 2019 and some of the major partnerships that you alluded to. Really appreciate taking time out and uh, have fun in terms of uh, Tiger Cat football this weekend. Yeah, well, they, I'm going to have fun this weekend because it's a bye week. So that's perfect for me. I get a chance to, to take it easy from the uh, from the TSN radio side. And, and, yeah, they need to get back on track. And I certainly appreciate the time to, to chat about what we're doing and uh, look forward to doing it again.